What up, Ho Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten, back at it again. My best friend is here, looking beautiful as ever, gorgeous as ever. I'm sorry, you're what? My best friend. Oh, okay. My That's best friend. That's what I thought I heard. This bitch. Got me paying a rent, paying for trips, diamonds on her neck, diamonds on her wrist, and here I am all alone. All alone. I don't know the rest of the song. See, okay, okay. So I, I, I am gonna get her together. It's okay. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. I got it. But no. So anyway, this bitch was meeting up with one of her many, many men. Yes, her many lovers. Mm -hmm. Dozens. She has dozens of them. Uh, I wouldn't say how would dozens. You even find I'd say time? a plethora. How would you even find time for dozens? I don't know. Do you just get like one a week? You just kind of ask. And they would all want to like talk to you. They oh, all wanna, like, they would all wanna, like spend time with you and stuff. <laughs> like my phone, I get a text. I'm like, oh, oh no. Now someone's calling. My phone would stay on. Do not disturb. <laughs> you know that meme is like, oh man, I slept for 26 hours, and people are like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> that would literally be you. And it wouldn't even be for any good reason. And she'd be like, I didn't want to talk to you, so. <laughs> but no. So anyway, she was meeting up with one of her men folk, right? And I was like, oh, let me talk to your little friend. Let me talk to your little friend. Cause right? she's rude. And she was like, no. And then she's like, my friend says hi. <laughs> Her friend. Mm. Me. Mm. I'm just her friend, apparently, mm. at this point. Just her yeah. friend. Yeah, she immediately checked me. Immediately. I was, was like, like, you're who? You're what? You, don't, don't play me just because your little friend is Just because you're... <laughs> don't play me. A direct quote. <laughs> she was like, oh, I'm sorry. My best friend. I was like, yeah, let him know. Make sure My he knows. My best friend says hi. Thank you. Give me my flowers while I'm alive. I'm not gonna turn you into a confection. I appreciate that. If you haven't watched that SCP video, watch it. It's disgusting. Auntie Hoosen, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying safe and sanitized. Today, me and my best friend, she a real bad bitch. <laughs> uh, sorry, me and my best friend are here to watch Casual Geographic. Um, the title of this is Flying Snakes, Poison Birds, and a Homicidal Golf Ball. I feel like the Homicidal Golf Ball can fly. I've just decided. It's gotta, it's gotta be able to, right? Unless it's like in the water, maybe? Maybe it's a bug. What if it bur Why would you say that? <laughs> Why would you say that? Just a big golf ball sized bug. That's nasty. That's nasty. <laughs> Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Happy Halloween. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, snakes can fly. Did, uh, did you know that? This is a Southeast Asian chrysoplia, but it's also called the flying snake. Flying snakes spend most of their time in the trees, and by pressing the ridges of their scales against the bark, they can actually climb straight up a tree even with no arms or legs. But instead of climbing down, these snakes save energy by flying from tree to tree. Let's do it. Basically, by flattening its body, the snake's belly forms a concave surface, kind of like a frisbee. What? By turning itself into a living parachute, not only can these snakes easily move That's through the air, they can actually cool. make turns mid-flight. And even what? though I low-key lied about them flying, these snakes can glide farther than animals like flying squirrels. In fact, a motivated snake can go for 330 feet. For non-Americans, that's about 100 meters. For Americans that don't understand distance, that's about the length of a football field. But these snakes Thank don't usually you. fly to catch bodies. In fact, most of the time they're doing it to avoid other animals. Even though it is know. venomous, unless you're like a rat. That's what you do. What? <laughs> just launch yourself. <laughs> Anytime you think you might have to hang out with me, just launch yourself. <laughs> this situation feels uncomfortable. <laughs> or something, it probably won't kill you. Don't be a snitch. It doesn't change the fact that somewhere in the world you can actually look up and see a snake getting hang time right over That's your head. Cool. I want you to remember that tonight. This bird can end your life in one of the worst ways possible. Yes. This is a hooded pitawi and it's the only poisonous bird in the world. Its feathers, skin, and even tissues contain a potent batrachotoxin that it steals from the beetles it eats. That same poison is the reason why this oh, frog can murk 20,000 mice, frog. pack up 10 people, and even though it can sleep on a quarter, this frog allegedly contains enough toxin to drop a full-grown elephant. Yeah. And that's the same poison this toxic sweetie uses to defend itself. And because its poison is a neurotoxin, it basically shuts down muscle by blocking the sodium channels of nerve cells. Meaning it would just get harder and harder for you to breathe until your lungs shut down. Eventually you'd become paralyzed, you'd lose consciousness, and your heart would stop. Not only can the poison turn you into past tense in only 10 minutes, the amount of poison it would take to turn your name into a hashtag weighs as much as 2 grains of salt. If you touch this bird with your lips, your entire mouth would go numb, and we know that because someone actually did it. 
But to be fair, this bird's never taken a human life. I'm sorry. That would happen. We know that because someone actually just two grains of salt. If you touch this bird with your lips, your entire mouth would go numb. And we know that because someone actually did it. Someone probably was like, I want to give the bird a kiss. The killer bird. The poisonous bird. You remember... <laughs> you remember how, how you know just that. told that story about that person that ate the honey? Uh-huh, uh-huh. There was a baby in it, uh-huh, right? Uh-huh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I have the same feeling about kissing a poisonous bird that I do about no! eating mysterious honey that you find in no. an archaeological dig. No, no, no. Kissing a poisonous bird seems so reasonable. But did they die? Hmm? I was gonna say something rude and I won't. <laughs> but to be fair, this bird's never taken a human life that we know of. But this tiny bird has the power to put you on the news and I don't think nearly enough people talk about it. It's Halloween, so naturally I gotta ruin your day. This is your only chance to scroll. So way back when in Victorian England, people would try to remove tapeworms by first having the patients starve themselves for a couple of days. Then they would insert a cylinder with food into the digestive tract to lure the tapeworm and then it would be pulled out through the mouth. Now the problem was that some of these tapeworms grew to six feet long, so allegedly there was a good number of patients that actually choked to death before it was completely out. But the worst part? Back then, a lot of women would purposely infect themselves with tapeworms, that way they could eat whatever they wanted without gaining weight. A very literal big mistake, because tapeworms can grow to 26 feet long and they can live inside the host's body for 30 years. That's a whole mortgage, my guy. Also, tapeworms give birth more than any other animal, since what they can have mean? to a thousand segments called proglottids, and some species have up to a hundred thousand eggs in just one of them. Meaning some tapeworms can release nearly a million eggs in a 24 hour cycle. I'm sorry? And if you're infected with that tapeworm, you. that means you probably do too. According to health organizations, about 50 million what? people are infected right now, and unless you show symptoms, you might never know it's inside you. In fact, some tapeworms can suppress the immune system so that your body's built in defenses don't attack it. But it also means some tapeworms could cause you to have less of an allergic reaction to certain things. So if you ever wake up one day and you can drink milk all of a sudden, you might want to get checked. You <laughs> might just have a roommate living rent free in your guts. Okay. Pause. Woman nearly meets God without even realizing it. I don't think y'all understand just how lucky this woman is. Octopus. Now you definitely know that's a blue ring octopus. And I'm sure you know it's one of the most venomous things on the planet. And you might even know that one bite from it is toxic enough to put 26 men on milk cartons. But there's a special thing about them that somehow makes them even worse. Because it's so small, if this octopus bites you, there's a good chance you're not gonna feel it. It's like a pinprick, and it's why most people don't even realize the countdown's already started. Because you don't feel it, but when this homicidal golf ball bites you, it injects you with a neurotoxin about 10,000 times more powerful than cyanide. And once that venom's in your body, it can shut down muscles causing difficulty breathing and eventually paralysis. Meaning you would just suffocate to death. Which is why this octopus can kill you in as little as 30 minutes. Which is bad enough, but if you don't know you've been bitten, you can end up getting flatlined out of nowhere if you don't seek medical attention. And if the paralysis hits you while you're swimming, use your imagination. Basically, you can hold this octopus for three seconds and be a was in half an hour. Which means this woman Euro stepped dying in one of the worst ways possible. Anything that tries that hard to be seen is probably more toxic than future. That goes for animals and people. That just reminded me. I was on Twitter, right? And it was people were talking about the baby, how he's garbage, whatever, whatever. And Girl. somebody was like, why don't y'all have this energy for future? And I was like, what part of the internet have you been on? Because on my side, on on my side, we stay dragging future. No, 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 no. That person's dumb. Even future fans, hold on, let me just, there we go. Even future fans make jokes about his misogyny. That's right. why he's always the, when a man does something, they're like, yes, he studies at the Church of Future, why women deserve, the jokes are there. Why don't you have that energy for known deadbeat future for the man? With- like, I was literally sitting there like, your side of the internet is slacking, I guess. No, 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 no. Why don't you have that same energy for future? Because clearly you have cultivated a life where people just love everything that man does. Because me and mine? Even the people I don't like know he's a bad dad. Garbage. He's garbage. The, his kids have gone off. So anyway, that's what that reminded me of. Because I was just like, what's not clicking, Steven? I don't know. He sent me that one lady and she couldn't snap and it just tickled me. (laughs) But yeah, so anyway, apparently there's a side of the internet that doesn't think future is a walking dumpster fire. Wow. Could it be me? (laughs) 
for animals and people. This is what happens when one of the deadliest animals in the world gets a taste for humans. What? So back in 1898, the British started building a railroad bridge over the Savo River in Kenya, and they employed several mostly Indian workers over an eight mile area. But what they didn't realize was they had accidentally wandered right into the territory of one of the top predators on the planet. Tigers. Because over the next nine months, Two mainless male lions would stalk the workers, and when they would return to the campsite after a long day, the lions would sneak in and literally drag the workers out and maul them into a statistic. What? And eat them. Well. And at first, only one lion at a time would enter the campsite. But eventually, the two male lions started catching bodies together as a team. Oh my the crew God. tried to break this kill streak by putting up a thorn fence. Told him a motivated Simba can jump 11 feet in the air, so the lions Dang. easily cleared it. In only three months, 29 workers had been put in an ashtray by the hungry lions, to the point where the other workers started to panic and leave the construction tray. site. So the head officials responded by bringing in hunters to evict the lions from the area, and y you know where it goes from here. Cowie's looking down at him, he knows how this movie ends. Late one night, the lions allegedly broke into the hunter's cabin where they mauled one hunter, dragged him outside, and that was the night his name got taken off the census. Eventually, the two lions were shot and put out of commission, and it took nine rifle shots to drop the second one. Oh my God. Eventually, the railroad workers finished the bridge, but it cost over 130 men and two lions to do it. Jesus. And the number of men lost was an estimate, because apparently lions don't leave a lot of their victims behind. And with all the bodies the lions caught, the workers might have built the track, but the lions ran the train. Wait for it! I can explain! <laughs> You're... <laughs> What, why are you the way that you are? It just reminds me of every time on Twitter when discussions of like specific men come up. And they're like, which, my husband. They'll be like, which one? And they'll be like, all aboard. <laughs> the workers might have built the track, but the lions ran the train. Wait for it. I can explain. Once upon a time I downloaded TikTok as a joke and now I explain stuff like this for a living, ain't that some sh**? So when a lot of baby birds are still in the nest, instead of deucing all over the place, instead they'll dump into a white mucus membrane called a fecal sac. It's basically a built-in diaper for baby birds. And just like in the video, normally as soon as a chick is fed, it'll release a sh** sac for the parent to deal with. Because being a parent literally means dealing with all kinds of sh**. If the chick can't produce a sac on its own, then the mother will poke and prod around its cloaca to stimulate it into dropping its pamper pack. And the reason they do this is because one, keeping all that nastiness in the sack keeps the nest clean. And number two, the cleaner the nest is, the less likely it is that a predator finds it. Now the reason the mother eats it is because baby birds can't digest food completely, so they end up leaving a lot of nutrients in their poop. And since nature loves to recycle, oftentimes the parent, usually the mother, will eat the sack so the nutrients at least don't go to waste. The more you pay attention, the more you realize birds are just really f***ing weird like that. <laughs> normally by the time the chicks are ready to fly, they don't need a fecal sack anymore because their systems can handle all the food they normally eat. If I have to know this, so do you. That's a good. That's so. Mm. so. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, I don't even. I just, just. I'm waiting. I, I just wanted a sec. All I asked for is a second because that is not what I thought I was witnessing, and now I just have to process <laughs> the fact that that is a thing. So I'm waiting for the for the mm. the fico diet, right? Some white lady, some suburban white mom. Why? With way too much time on Why her hands. Why are you putting this out into the universe? It's definitely, definitely gonna go viral for eating her baby's shit in the next Is this couple your queen? of years. Is this your queen? That's def definitely what's gonna happen. No. Well, you know, baby. We already have the free bleeders and all that. We're good. We're well, good. you know, the baby can't fully. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> no, ma'am. And you know, as a mom, I like to reduce waste in my <laughs> When this comes out, I'm going to call you and cuss you out. <laughs> I know it's your fault. I know it's your fault. Oh, man. All right. What is this? Is this a shark? What's going on there? Is that normal? No. <laughs> what is that? So sharks have this reboot feature where they go into a trance-like state and can't move at all. It's called tonic immobility, and it usually lasts for about 60 seconds, but it can go on for up to 15 minutes when left alone. You can also trigger it yourself by rubbing a shark's snout near its eyes. And once the shark snaps out of it, it goes back to whatever it was doing like nothing ever happened. We don't know for sure why they do this, but most scientists believe it has something to do with mating. It also could be because sharks use electroreception to figure out where they and other animals around them are. It's like an already installed GPS. 
So flipping a shark upside down probably just disorients them, and tonic immobility stops them from moving and thrashing around until they can readjust themselves. Oh, okay. Also, this can and has been used against them. Once off the coast of California, a female orca held a great white shark upside down for 15 minutes. Uh, Since the uh, shark uh, was paralyzed and couldn't escape, it ended up suffocating to death. Which is probably why a waterproof Oreo can legitimately traumatize a shark for an entire year. No, oh, seriously, sharks will avoid an area for a whole trip around the sun if they run into an orca once out of fear being factory reset by them. Angry Cougar follows man for nearly six minutes. So this hiker actually did the right thing and saved his own life. With ambush hunters like wild cats, you never want to turn away from them because then you might activate their predator response and then they'll just hit you from the... They'll attack from behind. You also never want to run because then you'll just trigger them into chasing you. And at up to 45 miles per hour, you're not going to get very I'm far. It's sorry? like hitting snooze on Why death. Are they so also, you fast? never want to crouch down and be in a position lower than the cougar. Mountain lions don't recognize humans standing on two feet as prey, but if you squat or bend down, pause. The walking flex could confuse you for a four-legged prey animal, and if it does, it's credits. In general, you never want to crouch down in mountain lion country, even if you don't think there's one around. Because just because you don't see him, doesn't mean he don't see you. So to not get turned into a story on CNN, you want to stand tall and speak in a loud, firm voice. It really doesn't matter what you say, cougars don't understand Back English, the but they do up, understand bitch. volume, and if you speak loud enough, you can actually intimidate them. And like the man in the video, you're going to want to so do this ready. while backing away slowly. You don't want to turn your back, and you don't want to go too fast, because if you trip and fall and get turned into a hashtag, you're going to feel really stupid in the afterlife. Yeah. Also, cougars are actually afraid of people and normally won't attack you unless they feel cornered. In fact, the cougar in this video doesn't want to attack the hiker, and if I had to guess, the hiker accidentally got too close to the cougar's cubs. Aww. Cougars will hide their cubs in brush and bushes, so it's basically nah, the mother's way did. of escorting you out. But they're so cute, it might be worth it. Yeah, 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 get mauled to death, just like that idiot almost did, because he was definitely too close to that baby, and then out of nowhere, here comes... <laughs> they're so cute, you just want to pick it up the whole Yeah, I dare you, pick it up. I'll get a new best friend. No, I won't. I'm gonna talk hella snack at your funeral. You can't talk shit at my funeral. I am. How am I gonna make new friends? If a cougar does charge, 90% of the time it's just a bluff to intimidate you. 10% say goodbye. But you can respond by throwing rocks and sticks, not at the cougar, but at the ground in front of it as a warning shot. That's how you survive a cougar. Oh, God, or at least the cat. Mind. If yeah, a cougar presses yeah. you here, I got no tips for you. But she might. That was great. That was a good time. The Fico diet. I thought we had moved past this. What was your favorite clip? <laughs> okay, you wanna know what my favorite clip was? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Positive. A hundred percent sure. I can't I can't think of any other clothes that I can do in this moment. Okay. So, yeah. Um, no, it was a stupid bird thing. <laughs> it was a stupid bird thing. And I'm mad because you what, what did you think it was? I don't know. I just knew I was distressed and I learned something new, so that was cool. My favorite clip. Wait. Oh. Wait. Oh. Sorry. Also, the little murder octopus? I was gonna say, my favorite was definitely the murder octopus. It looks so cute in your hand. See, you wanna hold the murder octopus, I wanna hurt That's the very murder different. kittens. That's hold, very different. Hold the murder kittens. Hold the murder kittens. Hold, hurt, whatever, murder kittens. Murder kittens, that sounds, no, that sounds like a painful death. You stop breathing. You suffocate to death. To Tell me how I'm supposed to breathe. No. <laughs> Jordan Sparks and Chris Brown were preparing me for this moment. They were, hey man, they were preparing us for a lot of things, honestly. Cause I'm. <laughs> Andy Hoosen, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendations down in the comments below. I'm not gonna do it. And other than that, peace out, Hope Biscuits. It's... Skittin' lit.